Hey, it's Sunday. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little uh, deeper or hoarse. I got a hold of some kind of sinus deal this week. I don't know what kind of trees we got into or brush or whatever. Could have been cedars. I'm allergic to cedars. But anyway, today I'm going to tell you a little story that happened to me. The only reason I'm telling you this story is so it don't happen to you. A lot of you guys are just stump grinders. You need to know how tree companies work. I used to own a tree company, a smaller one. But I used to grind back then, even as I was a tree service. I had the 252, and three different craning companies would always call me because, you know, I could. I was Johnny on the spot. I could bypass one of my tree jobs, come to them, and grind their stump. They were just really good to me. So what happened here was... Uh, by the way, it's 9-11, so God bless all you guys that served and and all the policemen and firemen and people that, you know, it's kind of a famous day in this country, isn't it? Anyway, I know exactly where I was on 9-11. I got off duty and um, saw the first plane, still put my boots on because thought it might have been still an accident. And went through a tree job. I was on a roof, elevating uh, limbs off a roof with a power pruner. And um, that's when the second plane, and then the one that hit the Pentagon, too. So I knew, hey, uh oh. But anyway, that's besides the point. I'm making this so if somebody learns from this one, this uh, event might not happen to you. So 20 something years ago, the area I am, I'm in now is all built up with commercial, they look like residential houses, but they're businesses. Very beautiful piece of property. But back then it was just a field, a flat field. So I'll turn this around here in a second and show you. But what had happened was it was like in August, 100 degree, de 100 degree day. Tree company calls me, Adam will be ready in an hour. I said, okay. I so on I reroute my schedule, I come out here and um, what happens is I don't know, so I got somebody behind me backing up or whatever, wondering what I'm doing. But uh, anyway, I get out of here. I'm always early. Cranes up. It's a very particular situation here and I'll show you why. But cranes up. They got one last pick. Just it's a red oak straight log with one little the size of your pinky uh, branch coming off, okay, with one leaf on it. Tree company says, Ah, can you wait, Adam? We have lunch. Da, 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 da. I said, Yeah, so all the guys are sitting around the trucks, they're eating lunch, bullshitting. It's hot as hell, so I sit underneath the trees with them. We wait a little bit. It is hotter than hell. These guys get sweat all over them and all. The owner of the tree company is not here. He's playing golf. He never hardly ever took any time off. So it's just one day he decided to play golf. God. But one of the best crane operators I've ever seen. Taught me stuff. I mean, I was like a sponge. I'd show up at his job site. I'd ask, hey, you know, why are you doing this? He'd tell me why. What's this? He'd tell me why. And I would translate that to the fire service because if I ever came to a scene, stuff he would teach me would I could use. Alright? So long story short, everybody gets up to go to go to work. Let me turn this around so you can see the situation. Alright, as you can see, all this stuff wasn't here. This irrigation was it's just all flat. Okay. These are regular transmission lines, you know, cable and the regular transmission lines that go to homes. Coming across here, all the way down there, if you can see if this camera will focus, are transmission lines. Which later on, I asked the electric company, I talked to an engineer, I said, How much power is going through there? He said, 72,000 and above. I can't give you an exact 72,000 and above uh, voltage. Some of you guys that work for this type of deal, you know what the real deal is. You could correct me in a comment, but that's what I was told 20-something years ago. Now, there's a spacing between here. If they had proper spacing between those lines and here, 
okay? But there's some sag in these lines, okay? As they loop to go to pole to pole. See? There's the pole. These are regular poles. As they go, you know, like anything, they sag a little bit. <clears throat> well, everybody gets up to make the final cut. All right, he makes the final cut and he makes a signal to put a little tension on the log. Makes his cut. You guys that have been in craning know it, the log goes up and floats a little bit, right? So it floats. He wants to move it off the plate and lay it down. Crane operator turns the crane just a little bit. Everything's still good. Plus, you got to understand something too. I didn't tell you about this. See my reach? Twice of my reach, there's the guy. So, here I am right here. The guy would have been probably right there. Okay? Let's just say he's 10 feet away from me. He hugs the log, and he's a really tough, skinnier fellow. I mean, I'm not going to say his name, but people would know who it is. He grabs the log, rotates it. And it's just human nature to get all your strength in it. And, you, and the crane operator is going to drop it down another. It's up up in the air, maybe off the cut, maybe two feet or whatever. He's going to drop it. One of the limbs, that pencil size one with a leaf, gets close to these transmission lines. I don't, it touched it, brushed it. I really don't know. All I know is the guy stuck to the log being electrocuted with 72,000 volts. He's looking at me. I don't know if you guys ever seen these movies years ago called Faces of Death. It was the face of death. He's looking at me, and I said here, I was, and it's all happening in a matter of seconds. And I'm like, do I tackle him? Do I kick him? Do I, and I'm doing this. I'm, I'm rocking back and forth. And I, I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Because the fireman part of me says, don't be an idiot. It ain't gonna happen. You kick him wherever electricity. You, it's gonna, it's gonna go through us. We are ground. It's going from that to the log, to him, to ground. So he's stuck on a log. I see this blue halo over him. You could actually see the electricity go through his hands. Okay. He finally the crane with that motion or whatever. It comes off, the little stick came off. And this is all in a matter of seconds, okay guys? He drops off the log, okay? Cause see, when you're being electrocuted, you're locked up. You are locked. I mean, it locks every muscle in you, I mean. So, I duck down, I reach under the log, I grabbed his collar, and I ran with all my strength and dragged him probably about 10, 15 yards away and then I started working them. Now, I gotta step back, because I looked at the tree crew that was here. I knew both cruisers. The craning company was helping out another company, okay? Well, that guy hired a, like a day laborer type guy. Guy had a long, uh, let's see, how do I explain it? He had a long beard, ponytail, blonde hair honestly he looked like a buzzed out wild ass guy so I was like oh god here we go we gotta work with another flunky or whatever well when I grabbed the guy and he got electrocuted ran with him the entire tree crew fell apart I started giving him orders called 911 do this do that nobody could do anything they were screaming and running around like chickens without their heads off. The guy who was wild looking and all was a Vietnam vet medic. He came over with me. We worked him. We even took the freaking <clears throat> a big thing of water that we had, you know, those big old Gatorade containers that you put on trucks, threw it over the guy. Now, I was only a first responder. I was not an EMT. I was not a paramedic, but I had the old school, you know, some of you don't know what that is. So I'm working him, he's working him, and every few minutes of working him, I would see an aspiration, and I said, oh my God, we got him back, we got him back, he's going to come back, he's going to come back. 
I kept shouting out, did, did anybody call 911? Nobody was calling 911. They were, they were, they were too, too much in shock and spazzed out to do anything. Now, let me turn this around. Behind here, this fencing, all this wasn't here. This is all whatever. There's houses here with fences in their backyards. I landed up, getting up, letting the guy keep working them. I had to kick my way through some of these panel fences to get to a guy's house to have him call 911. He calls 911. Fire company comes. I leave. And I, I asked the guys, I says, hey man, he had aspir you know, I seen him breathing here and there. They said, no, Adam, that was just, I forgot what they call it. Some of you guys watch this are firemen and, you know, bring me up to date. Uh, they call it some kind of breathing. Basically, he's a dead man, but he's just, his body's just going through a function. Okay. So, I say all this to you. If you're a stump grinder and you show up at a crane site, stay back, stay out of everybody's way. Or if you're working around there, have a helmet on. If you're a crane, a tree crew with a crane there, somebody there has got to be a safety man. All right? I'm not going to tell you how to do crane work with trees. That's your expertise. Somebody there has to be a guy that walks around, looks, checks. I know you get tired, I know it gets hot, and checks everything out. And then, also what was taught to me, and I, I love this company that was doing this work here, was never spider web a job site. And what that means is, you know, some guy's, the climber's up top and he's cutting down and he's dropping all the limbs. And then you look down, down his own, his climbing rope, everything's all underneath brush and all. When you make cuts, clean up. Make the job site safe to where a guy can get in and around the tree. The same thing for the guy that's going to fell a tree. Make sure your site is clean the way you have it. Exit to run and get out. You know, a lot of chainsaw accidents happen because guys are walking with saws, running through brush, trip, and they, they, they cut the damn thigh. I, I, get, I can't tell you how many guys I know have uh, long, long lines of stitches on their legs, you know, from that. And not wearing chaps. Anyway, it's 9-11. I just want to tell you all that God bless you all. That's why I'm never around when a crane is up. When people call me, say, Adam, that, that we'll have it out or whatever, call me when the crane's down. So the older guys know why I say that. A lot of younger guys with it, they don't understand it, but it's me. It jacked me up for a long time. Even though I was a fireman, I, I was the guy close to the guy. I'm the one saw his eyes. I'm the one saw him. Basically, his soul was telling me, help me. And I couldn't do anything until he finally got released from the log. So it's just my thing. I'm never around when the crane is up. Have I ever seen a crane fall through a house? I have different training companies. I have. I've also seen the wrong cranes being used in the tree servers. Put it in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. The wrong types of cranes being used in the tree servers. Anyway, God bless you. Be with your family today. See you on the next one.